Hey guys, it's Aphelion, and I wanted to wish you guys a happy Halloween. Today, I have something special for you. Today, I'm going to be telling you about a mythical creature, one of my absolute favorite mythical creatures. So, hang in there and prepare to be scared, because this one is creepy. So, for this story, I have a little bit about the mythical creature here, and then I have a creepy pasta I'm going to be reading to you guys. So, I hope that you guys enjoy it, and tell me what you think. And yeah, let's get started. The mythical creature that I'm going to be telling you about today is called the Kelpie, or Water Kelpie. The Kelpie is the Scots name given to a shape-shifting water spirit inhabiting the locks and pools of Scotland. It is usually being described as appearing as a horse-like creature, but is able to adopt human form as well. The Kelpie may appear as a beautiful tame pony beside the river. It is particularly attractive to children, but they should take care. For once on its back, its sticky magical hide will not allow them to dismount. Once trapped in this way, the Kelpie will drag the child into the river, drown them, and then eat them. These water horses can also appear in human form. Some accounts state that the Kelpie retains its hooves when appearing as a human. They may materialize as a beautiful man or woman with water weeds in their hair, hoping to lure young women and men to their death. The sound of a Kelpie's tail entering the water is said to resemble that of thunder. And if you are passing by a river and hear the unearthly wailing or howling, take care. It could be a Kelpie warning of an approaching storm. A common Scottish folk tale is that of the Kelpie and the ten children. Having lured nine children onto its back, it chases after the tenth. The child strokes his nose and his finger becomes stuck fast. He manages to cut off the finger and escapes. The other nine children are dragged into the water, never to be seen again. So remember, always take care when you see a horse standing near a body of water. It might not be as friendly as you think. All right, guys, here is a creepy pasta story that I found of the mythical Kelpie. Sit back and enjoy. I wasn't very old when I first saw it, maybe about five or six or so. It was a long time ago, but I remember it well. It was summer. I was playing near the bayou, not far from my grandmother's house. I had been sent there to spend the duration of the warm season. My mother thought it was good for me to breathe in the fresh, humid air instead of the city smog. My summer that year had been spent with my grandmother down south. She was a fierce old lady, second generation from Scotland. Often she would tell wonderful tales of the locks and forests of her parents' homeland. She would tell of all the creatures that lived there within the waters and the woods. One of my favorites was the Selkie, beautiful seal woman who could change shape at will as she sunned on the rocks or swam in the sea. Another was the Ich Usage, a more ferocious beast, but also quite interesting to me. My grandmother said that they could take form of a singing woman where they would lure sailors into the ocean and drown them in the salt water. Like sirens, the one I loved the most, though, was the unicorn. Such a majestic, mysterious creature, I liked how pure it was. I had always had a desire to see one, to touch its pure, white coat, but I knew they weren't real, just stories, just tales, but I liked to pretend. One day, I went down to the bayou to catch a fish. I was very proud of myself, having made a pole from a stick and some string. My grandmother laughed and said, if I caught a fish, she would cook it for me. I became very determined to the task. I told her I would be back before sundown. I waited at the banks of the river, legs crossed and pole in hand. 
There was a small bit of uncooked bacon at the end of the line. I knew I was going to catch a fish. I just knew it. My train of thought and concentration was broken by some music. Someone was playing a fiddle. The sound was enchanting. I looked around for the source. Not finding one, I tried to follow the sound, abandoning the pole on the bank with the line still in the water. I quietly crept along the bank, walking until I found the source of the music. I found who was playing the fiddle. It was a young man sitting on the branch of a large tree. The limb hung just above the water, and the young man lay against it, suspended over the mirror-like surface, playing a tune to his wooden fiddle. The white strings seemed to glow in the faint morning light. He stopped when he saw me and smiled. No words came between us, but he beckoned for me with his hand to take a seat on the mossy bank, and he continued to play. The music was wonderful. When the song ended, I asked for him to play another. He nodded, but only if I went into the water. My grandmother had been very keen with me to keep out of the water. I could not swim at the time, and she made me promise to stay on the bank. So I removed my shoes and let my legs dangle in the cool, calm water. He played another song. When he finished, he beckoned me with his hand again to come closer, deeper into the water like he was going to tell me a secret and whisper into my ear. I shook my head. I had made a promise. The young fiddler seemed sad, disappointed. I can't quite remember the details of his face, but I can just remember his frown. He sighed and rolled off the branch into the dark water without a splash. Just a few small ripples came from where he entered the bayou. He never came out of the water. After that, I went back to the house as my grandmother called my name. First I ran to get my pole. A tiny minnow was at the end of a paperclip hook. I almost told my grandmother about the young fiddler, but I didn't. She would just think I was strange and say it was nonsense. The next day, I went back again, back to the bayou banks, fishing pole in hand. I said to my grandmother I would catch a bigger fish today. I told her I would be back before sundown, just like yesterday. I went back to my spot and sat cross-legged pole in hand. There was a small cut of deer on the hook. I sat and waited for a fish to bite, my thoughts trailing off about my grandmother's stories. They were stopped by the sound of laughter. It was a girlish laughter, light and soft. I was curious. Usually the bayou was so lonely, just the call of faraway birds and the hum of cicadas but the laughter broke through. I followed the sound, leaving my pole on the bank and the line in the water. Moving silently, I walked along the bank. In the same place with the low-hanging tree limb was where I found the source of the laughter. That small, watery grove seemed a little different. A large gray rock sat in the middle of the water, emerging from the deep. I hadn't noticed it before. Possibly, I just hadn't remembered it from when I met the young fiddler. Sitting on the rocks were three young girls. They looked a few years older than me. All of them had long, dark hair that swayed around them like thousands of weaved silk strings. Hearing them laugh made me happy. I don't really know why. I got closer and sat on the bank to watch them. The girls were as beautiful as the silkies in the tales of my grandmother's stories. They all had fair skin that seemed to glow in the dimmed bayou light. One of them met her dark eyes with mine. She beckoned me with her finger to come towards her. She wanted me to come play. I wanted to. They seemed as though they were having so much fun on the rock there. I took off my shoes and rolled up my pant legs. I waded in up to my knees and my feet sunk slightly into the bayou mud. But looking down into the water, I remembered. I couldn't swim. I sadly stood there, sorrowful that I could not join these new friends. One by one, they slid effortlessly into the water and swam towards me, only their eyes visible above the water with their hair flowing behind them. They swam around my legs, barely disturbing the water. One pulled gently at my leg, another at my hand. I shook my head. I couldn't. Disappointed, they sighed dismally and let go of my hand and left slipping away like the water they swam in. Their sighs were almost musical. I didn't want them to go. I almost swam in after them. 
But I heard my grandmother's call. I went to get my pole. A small fry was on the end of my line. I almost told my grandma about the Bayou Selkie girls. But I didn't. I felt like they were mine somehow. Like a secret that only I would know. The following day, I set out again. I was going to get a bigger fish. I had to. This was my last day in the bayou, and I was going home the next day. I told my grandmother that I would be back before sundown, and went to the bank to fish. With a pole in my hands and legs crossed, there was a small strip of gator meat at the end of my makeshift hook. I gazed out into the dark still water. It seemed almost dead. Lovely, but dead. A metallic blue dragonfly landed on the water, took a sip, and flew off. I watched it go. My attention was then turned to the most unusual noise, hooves. There were no horses in the bayou, so I started to wonder. I put my pole down on the bank and let the line sit in the water. I followed the sounds of the horse. Yet again, I came to that same place. The willows hung low, the tree limbs sat just above the water, and the rock was empty of any selkie girls. Standing by the tree on a small island bank in the middle of the water, a pure white horse. It pawed at the ground with long furrowed hooves. Its mane was elegant and shiny. It seemed to glow, just like the selkie girl's skin and the young man's fiddle strings. It was beautiful. It looked towards me and waved its head up and down and up and down. It was calling to me. Without hesitation, I got into the water. I didn't even take my shoes off. I stood knee deep. The white horse trotted into the water and began to swim to me. I hoped it would play with me on the banks, or at least in the shallows. It stopped though, just a little further from where I was. It could stand there, but then again, it was much bigger than me. The water couldn't be too deep over there, could it? I looked towards its back. It was offering me a ride. In my excitement, I forgot all about my grandmother's words and went deeper and deeper into the water, up to my chest, then my shoulders. The water felt suffocating as it went higher and higher. I felt my lungs were being crushed. I held my hand out to the white horse. It was still just out of reach. I took another step into the water. Now I was to my chin. My fingers brushed over its silky mane. Water weeds had collected in it, giving it green flecks here and there. I went to touch it again. This time though, it felt more sticky like tape or glue. Looking down into the water, the white horse had lost its glow. It seemed more gray, darkening the further down it went until almost black. Maybe it was just the water. My foot slipped. I went under the water, opening my eyes in a panic. I was horrified at what I saw in front of me. Where the white horse's belly and legs would have been, I only saw smooth, black, decaying flesh. Water weeds strewn in and out of it, black legs fused together in a slowly fanning tail. Its eyes were blue and clouded, and I could see its jagged teeth through its decayed mouth. A long greenish black tongue lapped out of its jaws. It was like something out of a nightmare. I immediately stepped back, my movements slowed by the water. I turned around and my head broke the surface as I reached the shallows. I scrambled onto the bank and looked back. The white horse was gone. I felt relief, although I deeply missed the white horse. Where had it gone? I heard my grandmother call my name. In my soaked and muddy clothes, I ran to my fishing pole. A large catfish was at the end of the hook. I had left both behind, though, and hurried back to my grandmother's house. This time, I told my grandmother about the white horse. I left out the selkie girls and the young fiddler from my story, and I did not mention the nature of me falling into the water, but I asked her about the white horse in the water. She told me the tale about the kelpie. It was a water demon that often took the shape of a beautiful white horse, among others such as a handsome man playing a violin or a young maiden. It would offer a ride to anyone willing, then take them into the water and drown them nothing would ever be found of them. That night, I forced myself to go back there. I needed to see if it was real. By the light of my torch, I followed the path that I had taken as I had searched for the source of the sound. The 
after hours of searching, I could not find it. No green willows, no hanging tree limb, no rock. I went back home the next day. Happy to be away, yet desperate to go back. But I never did again. And that's it, guys. That is the tale of the Kelpie, including a creepypasta reading. The creepypasta is titled Kelpie and can be found on creepypasta.com, although I do not see an author here. It was an amazing tale. I loved reading it. I love spooky mythical creatures. The Kelpie is my absolutely favorite mythical creatures because I love horses and I could just see myself getting lured in by a Kelpie. Well guys, that is it for today. I hope that you liked my spooky Halloween video all about Kelpies. Anyways guys, I hope that you enjoyed the video and I hope to come out with some more spooky content. I know it's kind of a little late because today is the last day of October, but that doesn't mean that we can't still be spooky and I can produce more freaky things for you guys. But anyways, please like and subscribe. Share me around to all your friends and I hope that you enjoyed the video today. Have a great rest of your Halloween and I will see you guys next time.